Today on Exponential Africa, we have Anita Joel Breda, who is a Singularity University Nordic faculty on artificial intelligence. She is also the co-founder of Iris AR, which is an artificial intelligence company which takes unstructured data and structures it. Anita, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So do you want to tell us a bit more about what Iris AR does? Yeah, so we specifically work uh, towards researchers, both academics and in kind of heavy industry. Um, and we help them in their process of going from, hey, I have this idea or research project or project description, going all the way to finding this is the precise reading list I need. Um, because the, the literature review process or doing kind of these systematic research landscape mappings, which are the, they're called in academia, is an incredibly tedious process because you have to read through you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of documents to try to find what is actually relevant to you. And, and it's so, not actually possible. No, it's not possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could do it in academia if you have enough time. It takes three to six months, you know, four to five people doing it. It's just an incredible waste of time when we have the technology now to actually semi-automate the process. Incredible. So you take, you, your, your algorithms actually take that process, well, they minimize it completely. How much do you shorten the process by? Um, so it really depends, you know, it, up to up to 80%, but it really depends the accuracy you need. Like the, the higher accuracy you need, you need, the more human kind of validation you need of the results. Um, but, you know, if you're, a, say, a, a PhD student or a master's student, you know, you can do a, a pretty decent review in a couple of days. Uh, while if you're a professor, you still need a month, as, but again, as opposed to, you know, three to six months. Incredible. And um, how long have you been running Iris? How long has this been going for? So it's been about three and a half years since we started. We started it at Singularity, uh, summer 2015. Amazing. What, what, where, what, were you part of the GSP 2015? Yeah, I was. And what is that? Can you tell us a bit about what that is? So it is a crazy summer of exponential technology and these amazing, amazing people that use all this crazy technology to do good for the world. And you're kind of, you know, fully immersed in this like bubble at NASA Ames Research Park for 10 weeks and it blew my mind. Wow, and, and were you always in AR uh, and, and sort of computer? No, more and... more general software startups. Um, so I've been in tech for since like 2009, I guess. I started my first company a couple of years before that and I've just been doing startup companies um, ever since. Incredible. Huh? And so, so at, at your GSP, you actually came up with this idea for iris.ir. Yeah. That's amazing. And since then, you've, ra you've raised funding and yep. you are, you know, going into many corporations. It's incredible. Yep. So, you know, your, your average startup journey in a way, you right? Fundraising. You the top high. woman to follow by Forbes magazine globally, the top, mm -hmm. top, top 40 women to follow uh, by Forbes magazine mm -hmm. in tech, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. so, it's, been, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> been a busy three and a half years, it sounds like. Yeah? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And tell us a little bit more about how algorithms work, um, just for, the, for the, the viewers that don't really understand what is artificial intelligence. Um, well, artificial intelligence is an incredibly fluffy term, right? It's like this like, massive umbrella term that no one really knows what is, and everyone has their own definition. Like, are we talking robots? Are we talking like human-like robots? Or are we talking just software? And to me, like the, the major difference, or the, the, the simpl simplistic difference, perhaps, between AI-based software and regular software, because it really just is a combination of kind of software that runs on hardware and some data in it. Like, it's, it's pretty much the same. The major difference difference is that a regular software works more like a calculator, right? You give it A plus B, you get C every time, or two, two, two plus two always equals four. Yes. Um, but with AI or machine learning software, the answers you get will depend on the data the machine has seen over time, right? So the more data it sees over time, the more refined the answer of the machine gets. So you might give it A plus B uh, one day and you get the answer C, but like over time, the answer gives better, uh, the, the machine gives better and better answers. And that's like the core difference. And, and in that way, we say that we shape it less like a calculator and more like a human brain, which is, a flawed and problematic way to look at it, but it's simplistic and it works. No, awesome. And there's, there's all these new developments coming out every day. You hear about deep learning, machine learning, reinforcement learning. Right. You know, it's, it's, it seems like it's just the pace is just increasing, and this AI revolution 
is upon us. Well, it's like yes and no, right? Because yes, it is. So since 2012, we've had an, an unprecedented access to computational power and data, and it's just exploding. And that is what enables this revolution. However, deep learning was proposed already in 1986. It's, it's like old school technology, but now we can actually apply it. We can actually apply it to images. And now, you know, uh, a machine is, is way better than a human at recognizing that a cat is a cat, for example, which is like one of the things that our toddlers learn uh, pretty quickly, but a machine can, you know, a machine can do that better than a human being. Um, so we have all these things where suddenly machines are better than us. It's not so much about um, the, the algorithms and the methods. Uh, it's about refining them and applying them and using them. And obviously there's breakthroughs all the time as well, but it's one of those fields that it simultaneously develops excruciatingly slow and at the same time it's just exploding, which is it's a trippy place to be. Amazing. And I mean, uh, what is reinforcement learning? That's like that's like teaching the machine now to get rewarded for doing good, the right uh, task or the right sort of um, right. Well, operation. Exactly. So, re well, reinforcement learning. One way to look at it is two machines, um, you know, kind of competing against each other to give the best possible results. Right. Oh, okay. So, so, so two machines, kind of. Uh, for example, one can one can choose to um, you know assemble something, and the other machine you know p pulls it apart, and then they kind of go back and forth on it, right? So it's basically two machines reinforcing. It. Imagine like uh, like a kid that tries to learn, right? There's there's a few ways to do it, right? You can uh, you can learn it you learn by by having a, a, a you know your teacher tell you what's right or wrong. Um, you can learn, which is supervised learning. Uh, you can learn on your own, just like here's a book read it and figure it out, which is unsupervised learning. Um, and then you have, uh, you have reinforcement learning, which is more like a study group, almost, <laughs> in, in human terms. Like multiple kids or machines you know, learning together, learning from each other. Tell us a bit more about your journey with Singularity Nordics. How's that been? Have you, have you had a good ride? <laughs> Definitely. So I, uh, like a, a year and a half after I got home from GSP 15, and you know we'd started the company and it was going quite well, and then I, you know, I got the call whether I wanted to, you know, join the shortlist and potentially become faculty, which kind of blew my mind. And I was like, you, you sure? You, you know, but um, but no. So I, I got to join them um, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Wow. Did the faculty training and started giving talks. Um, you know, did my first summit there, and and when we did the Copenhagen summit. And it's just been a ride. Like the amount of really cool people you get to talk to, um, you know, meeting people, going to you know South Africa to talk, uh, did the Joburg conference, which was amazing. Um, and it's yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. No, awesome. Thanks so much. And it's been uh, incredible to have you on the show and uh, very insightful. Make Thank sure you. to watch out for Anita. She is one of the top women to watch by Forbes magazine. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to Exponential Africa. Thanks so much. Thank you. Awesome.